I'm Ken Danford from North Star, Self-Directed Learning for Teens, and today I have a special guest, an alumna from 2009 to 2011, Adriana Piantadosi. Thank you, Adriana. Thank you for having me. It's just so nice to connect with you. Oh, this is so much fun to catch up like this. We'll do this in public. Um, so you're right around the corner. You're still in the neighborhood. You're in uh, Florence, part of Northampton, Massachusetts, right down the road. Uh, what, are you, what are you up to these days? What's the news? So the biggest news right now is that I was just accepted to Smith College as an Ada Comstock Scholar with a full scholarship. Um, but right now, uh, before I get started, I've been working at the Northampton Community Music Center for the past five years as the registrar in the past like three, three and a half years. I want to say and uh, so I'm working there and you know navigating uh, working remotely for the time being and then I'm gonna be transitioning to becoming a full-time transfer student in the fall at Smith. So you forgive me for being blunt but how old are you now Adriana? I am 28 years old. <laughs> All right and so you have been working for the past five years full-time four or five years and um, you were at Norstar when you were basically okay. 17 to 19 years old. Yeah. And so before this particular job, you also did community college. I want to say a little bit about um, that experience too, those years post yeah. Star. Yeah, I went to Holyoke Community College. Um, I worked part-time and attended part-time and I got a liberal arts degree and graduated in 2015. Um, and I loved it there. Like I, I did liberal arts, but within that I focused largely on music and I did a lot of different theater productions and the theater department and uh, creative writing and sociology and just, yeah, uh, really, it was a great experience. And so you left North Star, you had some jobs, you lived locally, you went to Holyoke Community College, you completed a degree there as an associate's degree, and then you've been working at the Northampton Community Music School for a number of years mm -hmm. up until now. You want to say a word more about your interest in music and singing and, and what you love about yeah. your work or uh, hobby? Yeah, totally. Um, I have loved music and singing since forever. I've always been singing uh, since my mother said since before I could speak. She would she would say that I was singing all the time. But I don't know. I've always just really enjoyed it and um, have sung in choirs and, uh, you know, community theater and regional professional opera and just all sorts of things over the years. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited to be pursuing that, you know, when in, in getting my degree now. Uh, but when I was at, I was actually a student at the music center be, be, before I became a staff member. So, you know, and now I work on the administrative side of things there. I'm the registrar, but I used to attend uh, the Kuumba Women's Chorus. And I also did the solo vocal performance class for teens. Um, specifically the women's chorus was possible because I went to North Star because it happened during the day and I was like the youngest member of the chorus and the only one that was that age that could be there because I had free time during the day where I could pop off to and go to Northampton and, and sing in the chorus there. All right, well stated. Excellent. So um, maybe after you got your associate's degree from Holyoke Community College, this question is about to be redundant, but after that time in the last five years, has it ever mattered to anybody anywhere that you homeschooled instead of uh, doing traditional high school? Has anybody ever been curious or wanted to see a transcript or anything of that ilk? No, it's really just not relevant in day-to-day -day life. Like if you have the the skills that you need to be part of a, a part of a program or, or just to engage with other people, like that's all that really matters. And you got accepted to Smith and a couple other local colleges. Uh, was it hard to apply and get accepted without a traditional high school transcript from all those years ago? No, if anything, it was easier. I, I ended up getting my GED after leaving North Star, but being able to just upload, because I still had a copy of my of my GED test record, the like test results. And so I had a scan of it and I just like sent that. I didn't have to like go requesting documentation from high schools. I was like, nope, I, I withdrew from high school as soon as I could. I homeschooled and then I got my GED here, have the PDF. So. Right, so if I summarize the, this, your adulthood, which is awesome. A post North Star, you went to community college, worked, got an associate's degree, got a job at a community music center that you were already connected with as a student and a known quantity. They've been working there a bunch of years. Now you wanna go uh, to full-time undergraduate college at uh, Smith College. And that whole thing has been smooth sailing 
even though you didn't go to traditional high school. Yeah. And, yeah. Right, and you're on your way. We'll come back to the, to the current at the end of the interview. But now let's flash back to what wasn't smooth sailing, perhaps, and what I hope is the heart of this interview for the people watching because they're interested in homeschooling. And even though they can look at you now and see your bright, shiny, happy, smiley face. Uh, when I first met you at 15 years old, it wasn't quite as smiley, maybe. No. It was shiny, maybe, sort no. of. <laughs> um, so let's go back to when you were 15 in maybe 2007, something like that. Back in the um, day, your yeah. mother brought you in. <laughs> And uh, what was your life like then? I was severely clinically depressed. Uh, and my mother sort of dragged me in. She had heard about North Star because of, a, I think it was an event that you guys had done at Forbes Library. And she was like, oh, this could be the thing for Adriana. Let's, I got to go, look into it. Um, but yeah, I was so depressed that I like, could not function in, in public school. I had always been an excellent student and had excelled. Um, and gotten good grades and this, that, and the other, but um, I had a degree of perfectionism and just like really severe anxiety and depression that all coalesced to a point where I couldn't function, I couldn't sleep, I like couldn't leave the house for a long time. And so like I ended up just not being able to attend school regularly and I was home most of the time. And thankfully my mother, like we have a long standing history of, of mental illness in the family. And so she was able to sort of see where I was and like recognize that, you know, going into a residential program might have been more traumatizing than, you know, being able to sort of build myself back up with support of, you know, out, basically outpatient services. Um, so I was able to stay home during that time, but there was also like a good period of time where I was just really isolated and miserable. And like, I think my depression was probably to some effect to some, yeah, like to some degree was impacted just by the nature of being home and like not having an outlet. Um, and so I remember, but she told me about North Star and she was so excited and I was like, okay, like, I guess that does sound cool. Like, let's check it out. And we came to meet with you and you're like, oh yeah, yeah. And you were talking to us and I ended up shadowing some, some North Star members for a couple of days. And I was like, yeah, this seems cool. And I'm also not up for it right now. And my mom was like, okay, but you had been so welcoming and you're like, yeah, well, like the whole point of North Star is that if it's a good option for you, great, do it. But if it's not, we support you. Like there are some students that come here out of, uh, at a public school, become North Star members and they have a grand old time and they stay here for the rest of their traditional high school career. And even, even though they're homeschooling now, they, they come here and they love it. Some people, they'll do a year here and then they'll go back to high school and like they just like sort of needed a, a reset and a refresh and whatever. And some people, you know, do a year here and then like go on to some internship and travel the world or whatever. Like there's no set path and we want to support you in doing whatever is best for your personal education. And I was like, okay, that sounds maybe too good to be true, but we'll see, you know? And so then I sort of, you know, went off and I needed some more time. Right. Were you already homeschooling by the time we met legally or did I coach you and your mom into filing homeschooling papers and becoming a homeschooler? You, I believe you coached us into it because I think, yeah, if we met you at 50, when I was around 15, I was technically, I had like a 504 and an IEP, like I had different plans, like first in middle school. And then I went to PDPA for a minute at the Pioneer Valley Performing Charter Arts Public School. And they were actually really lovely and accommodating and they were trying really hard to create a schedule that would work better for me like they offered me half days and like things to try to mitigate some of the, the experience that I was having just as like a supremely depressed youth um, but it still just wasn't the right fit like with everything that they were still able to offer and so so yeah I think we we didn't have a sense of like what would be the right thing to do and so talking to you really was like oh there are options <laughs> there are things that we can do that might not make it seem like life is hopeless and there's no there's no future for me well, whatever that legal moment was, was short-lived because you turned 16 and then you could homeschool with or without my help or permission because you yeah. just withdraw from school. There's no legal homeschooling in Massachusetts then. At any yeah. rate, so then you, you didn't join at that point. You went about your life as best you could. And then a year later or so, maybe actually a year and a half, two years later, you actually reappeared and said, I want to try again. I'm 17 yeah. and I need some people and I'm, I want to try this thing. Yeah. Do you remember that moment? Yeah, I, I don't know the exact moment, but I just remember feeling I had gotten to this point of isolation and just feeling so hopeless and like I didn't have any sense of structure. It's like I knew that when I was well, I was a really passionate person and I cared about things and I 
loved engaging and like, and talking to people and learning things and all of this. And like, I hadn't felt that in so long. And I had no sense of how I was going to get back to that. And then my mother and I had been talking and I think the, you know, North Star came up and, and it, it sort of clicked that I was like, oh, you know, maybe now that I'm in a place where I'm craving that again, and I can envision, envision trying to live a life again, maybe this would be a way to do that. And so I got back in touch and, and started at North Star. There you go. And then two years, you stayed what would have been 17, 18, and 18, 19. Sometimes we have teens who are, you know, a gap year, 18 to going on 19 years old, that age, staying with us. You weren't the first and you have not been the last for sure. It's a lovely uh, use of North Star, actually. Yeah. So you had two full years then with us. What do you remember from those two years? Oh, my gosh. I just, I just remember feeling like I could breathe like that, maybe that sounds silly, but I just, I think the time that I had spent in school, I felt so anxious in the public school system. And, and even though I was striving for great things, it was just, it was, it felt insurmountable, like between my mental health issues and between the structure of school, even though I knew how to navigate it when I was well, it just like was not the right fit. And so having gone from that to then being home for for basically years just very depressed and just like not really functioning to venturing forth into the world and like into north star um and being like oh like everything that you've heard about what you have to do as a teenager like throw that out the window like you are a person so we're going to treat you like a like a human person and what do you care about what are you excited about what do you want to do and i don't think i'd ever really been asked that before you know like adults always ask kids like oh what do you want to be when you grow up and and this was the first time i think that it had been pointed out to me that like you don't have to wait until you grow up you know you could do things now um Thank so that you. was really exciting yeah. and what do you remember doing then in response to that were there any classes at north star that were important to you yeah. or any other activities that you started then oh gosh yeah no i had so much i did um I did theater classes and got involved with productions with Ellen and Mia and a bunch of the, a bunch of the members and um, I took a philosophy class and I started a Buffy the Vampire Slayer class where we uh, looked at and examined the, the social context of certain episodes and um, just a whole bunch of different things. I also was able to take advantage of tutoring so I got to work one-on-one -on -one with a couple of I think it was like some local college students that had offered some tutoring services so um, there were just so many different options and it was, it sort of felt like you had carte blanche. It was like, what's, what's the thing you're interested in? If we don't offer it here, we might be able to. And if, if that still doesn't seem like the right option for right now, we might be able to find you a place out in the community where you can go and do that. Do you remember who your advisor was by any chance? Do we have the advisory system up and running? Then? I, I think it was Susanna. Sheffer that sounds was about right. Advisor. Yeah. Cause I remember I did her creative writing and like her writing workshop a lot. And so I remember like sitting down and meeting with her and talking a lot about my feelings, and, which was so important as a, as a teenager, you know, to have somebody who like I trusted and, and really gave me the space for that. Right. And you have some lifelong friends that you're still in yeah. touch with from those yeah. two years. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, some of them are still local, which is really nice. Like my friend Rowan and Syl are still in the area. And then, my friend Emily uh, lives out in Somerville, which is, you know, not that, not that far from here, you know, Boston area. But uh, so, yeah, no, there, it, I, I was talking to Syl on the phone the other day, actually, and we were just saying, like, it's such a blessing that, like, we've known each other, you know, for more than a decade at this point, and, and we feel like siblings, and, like, and we met at, at North Star. I remember, I think you had asked still to shadow me when they had come to to visit north star because you're like adriana's a friendly person she'll she'll show them around and they'll have a good time and then we became Very really good bit. friends yeah. yeah um so to make a long story short or to cut it here um you came to north star as an experiment to get out of your house and try to start something fresh and new that would be better than what school had been a couple different school experiments and then a, a solo homeschooling year or so. And it worked. Yeah. You had two good years of staff and other kids and activities and things. Do you remember also doing things out in the world while you were that age, like some other not North Star activities during those yeah, two years? Yeah, definitely. You said the chorus before. You already yeah, said, mentioned that one. Exactly. So that was one thing that um, one of my connections to the music center before I became 
I was like a volunteer and then and now a staff member, but before all that, I was a student. And so I attended the solo vocal performance class for teens, which happened on Monday evenings. So that didn't conflict with anything. But I also joined the Kuumba Women's Chorus, which, which met during the day. And had I been a traditional public school student, that never would have been an option afforded to me. But because I went to North Star and you can sort of create your own schedule and do what you want, it was really easy to just be like, okay, Tuesday afternoons, I'm going to go sing in this chorus with, you know, directed by Evelyn Harris, formerly of Sweet Honey in the Rock, and learn all, you know, learn to harmonize with other people and, and, and be in a supportive community of women. And um, yeah, so it just, it, yeah, North Star made it really possible for me to to just exist and, and enjoy my existence and we can imagine a flow a transition at 18 19 years old for out of north star to a real job paying job to um whatever entry level it would have been to uh to taking classes at holyoke community college and to increased involvement or continued involvement at the northampton community music center where you already were connected and that evolved into a better job for you yeah. um well, let's focus on the community college for just a minute. Mm -hmm. So at some point, either during or at the end and after North Star, you started taking classes at HCC. But you're a person, you said you were always good at school back in the day when you could go, but you really hadn't been doing school-like classes and deadlines and papers and assignments yeah. for maybe four or five years by that point. Mm -hmm. So how was it to be some homeschooling refugee, North Star alum who's signing up for HCC? Now you're in a classroom at college how did yeah. you do it were you nervous were you, were you capable what happened i was perfectly capable i was very nervous um but it all worked out really beautifully one one thing that i found out about hcc was they offered a like a free preparatory college transition and careers class that was free and they were the like the one the one person at the time that was like oh do you have your ged and i was like no but i can get it that's easy enough so i got my ged and then i enrolled in this program that sort of helped brush the dust off of, cause like I, I, I think I had gained a lot of critical thinking skills in like the creative writing workshop that I did at North Star and, but, um, and some of the other classes, but in terms of like actually, you know, thinking about doing formalized work in, in a school setting again, I was like, oh, this, this feels foreign. And this also feels scary just because my last experience with like a traditional school setting ended in me being horribly anxious and depressed. So like, how do I mitigate that? So I, I took this course and it was a great sort of transition into into college and they set me up with support services. Like I became, through them, they introduced me to the Strive program at HCC, which is for low income, first gen or disabled students. And so like that, that felt like a way to sort of naturally transition into HCC and feel like, okay, I've got a handle on this. Yeah. So I'm a huge fan of HCC, of Greenfield Community College as well, and of the general community college system, especially for these homeschooling people across the country, not just locally, but um, I'm a big fan. And, and your story is one excellent example of why that's true. Mm -hmm. um, and even to the extent that I assume some of the classes may have been challenging or hard or new or difficult. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be easy, but even as somebody who had not been in high school for a while, there you were 20, 21 years old, choosing to be in community college. Right. You didn't have any existential like, question about your ability to be there mm -hmm. uh when one class when you had a new hard class you had a new hard class like a normal yeah exactly and and it was also nice like specifically community college the format of that where it was like i could go and i could go at my own pace and it's like i could still have a life outside of school it wasn't like this this thing where it takes over for four years and you, you don't see the light of day until you emerge it was like okay like this is a nice way to sort of like yeah. to you know, take a non-traditional path. Cause that was something that I feel was so emphasized at North Star too. It was like, it's okay if you're not following the path that's been outlined for everybody. Like not everybody does that and they do just fine. And I was like, okay, okay, and let's, now, see how yeah. that, let's see how that goes. And just to jump ahead and then we'll go back one more question. But now five years later, those credits didn't disappear and Smith College and their acceptance of you is going to give you at least three, if not three and a half year, three and a half semesters, somewhere between a year they're, and a half, two years worth of credits for this experience. Yeah, exactly. They're, so I think, yeah, they're like taking like 51 out of the 60 credits that I got from my associate degree. So I'm in pretty good shape to just sort of dive in to Smith and, and have a good, you know, a good number of my gen eds taken care of, but then just be able to like get right into the courses at, at Smith and yeah, and just transition smoothly. So let me ask you, you know, the big question then, like, so now you're 28 and you're solid and 
heading off to Smith as a late adult college student, ready, you know, having had a, you know, a very interesting set of years in between. Um, does it even matter anymore that you, what you did in high school when you were, you know, 15 to 19 years old, like, isn't just like old news by now? Does it, does it, is it even relevant to the story? I feel like it's, on the one hand, I feel like, you know, you've talked about like, did anybody care, you know, did you get your high school diploma? And so it's like, on that hand, no, like it, like it does not matter. On the other hand, like being able to go to North Star and have this, this alternative education model that was like truly genuinely centered on what was going to be best for me as an individual, um, like that made all the difference in the world. And like, I, like, the, again, like just like the North Star slogan of like, you know, learning is natural, school is optional was, was a wild concept to me because up until that point I had been obsessed with fitting the mold and getting straight A's and this, that, and the other. And it was like killing the joy of, of learning for me. And I didn't really realize it until I went to North Star and they're like, oh, first of all, you don't have to do things the way everyone's telling you. And then also like, what do you care about and what do you enjoy? And so I feel like having that as a jumping off point, like having, having some formative experiences at North Star for, for those two years and lasting friendships since then and just, and experiences, you know, getting my feet wet with different theater things and, and all of that like has made such a difference and has made me feel so much more secure and happy, you know, going from my teen years into early adulthood. You just listed them all, but I'm going to ask you the question I had prepped anyway, which is, are there any other um, traits or parts of your identity now that you associate with being someone who just finally opted out of school and didn't, didn't try to bother finishing high school? So that when you and your North Star friends are together and you're like, you know what it means to be a North Star alumna, are there some things that come to mind for you in that? Um, I think just like not having to fit the mold and mm -hmm. like not in a way where it's like, oh, I'm a special, you know, like special unique butterfly or anything like that, but just like, oh, you know, there's the, all these systems in place and we're told from an early age that if we don't fit into these systems, we are failures. And to, to have gone somewhere that said, no, they got it wrong. There are systems in place. They fit some people. They're not going to fit everyone. And that, that is no, that is no mark against you. That is a mark against a system that does, that does not work for everybody and in fact leaves people by the wayside. And so I just feel like having that experience going to North Star just makes me feel like just like a more self-actualized person. Like that, maybe that sounds hokey, but just this idea of like, you know, I get to choose what I want to do with my life and I get to unabashedly enjoy things. That was another thing, like the social environment of North Star. It was like some kids who had in my time there, it was some kids who had homeschooled all their lives and wanted more social, um, you know, interactions, and some kids who had really struggled in school for whatever reason, behavioral issues or or mental health issues, or or just wasn't the right fit for them. And uh, it was just an atmosphere of like these are just a bunch of kids who like might not necessarily fit the mold, but they're all excited to be spending time together, and they're all excited to be learning, and they're all like it never felt super clicky like obviously you had people that you gravitated more towards as friends but it just always felt like at the end of the day you showed up because you wanted to show up nobody was forcing you to so like I think I've taken that into my life going forward of like okay if I'm showing up here if I'm choosing to engage in something now as an adult or just as a person like it's because I care about it and I love it and I want to be here thank you and I presume you're going to meet a bunch of people with similar visions as Ada Comstock scholars. Anybody who's choosing to have delayed undergraduate college to, to adulthood and then becomes an older adult undergraduate probably shares some of those traits with or without homeschooling or North or anything. Just you're likely to be among similar folk. Um, what are you going to major in there at Smith when you get there? So I'm still talking it over with, with uh, the Dean of the Ada Comstock program, but uh, I'm thinking probably I'm going to do a music major or minor, depending on how the credits shake out, and then sort of explore. Obviously, I you know, did the liberal arts at HCC, but um, I'm really excited about you know, theater and music and uh, telling stories and, and engaging collaboratively with people to tell stories about you know, people who are normally pushed to the margins. And so like, you know, you know, telling stories about women, telling stories, you know, collaborating with people to tell stories about people of color and with, like by and for people of color and, and queer people and disabled people. Um, 
I'm excited about that. So looking at that from like a narrative and, and theatrical standpoint and a sociological perspective and also um, how to thread music through that as well is all really exciting. So I don't exactly know if that's going to be like me designing my own major when I'm at Smith or if that's going to plug into something that's already there, but uh, it is early yet. So we shall see. Okay. And one last question that's sort of off topic, but really serious to your whole trajectory. And so it could be a whole another half hour interview and I'm going to ask you to keep this answer sort of short, but for people who are watching, who've been struggling with depression, somewhere along the way, you seem to have figured out a workable solution for yourself. And I'm curious if there's a short answer for you of uh, what worked for you or what, you know, was there a moment, was there kind of therapy, was there a medication, was there something that worked in your case or that is continuing to work for you? Yeah, um, medication and therapy was huge for me when I was younger. Um, therapy is still something that I am currently uh, engaging in regularly. I just think it's so helpful and I, I constantly encourage other people to, to go to therapy too in a loving way, of course. Um, but I think, I think, yeah, it's really, you, I think it's really important to take a holistic approach because I think when I was younger too, I was so initially fixated, like all the years that I spent when I was home, I'm not keeping this answer as quick as, as short okay. as I, as I intended, but it's a big when question. I was home, I think I spent so much time, uh, fixating on, okay, I'm going to my psychiatry appointments. I'm going to therapy. I'm taking my medication as prescribed and I'm still sad and miserable and stressed. And like part of that may have been hormonal, like puberty is no joke, you know, but I think, you know, part of it too was, was seeking out things, routines and, um, and things that would bring me joy and finding a way to incorporate that and also just learning better coping mechanisms and healthy boundaries. And so I don't know if there's like one, one good answer for that. I think it's really just, you know, finding what works for you, but exploring lots of different options to see right. what will be the best fit for you. Great. Well, thank you for sharing that. Cause I think a lot of people watching will be curious to hear more or think about that topic. So, all right. Well, this is such a joy. I'm so glad you're part of the North star experience in history and family and i'm really glad you're willing to share your story here with this audience so thank you adriana piantadosi yeah. thank you right. ken <laughs>